Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Manipause.com podcast. Today, we have somebody that you probably know of, at least you know his work. You may not know his name yet. His name is Chris Gargano, and he's been in the professional sports world for many years. Up until the end of August, he was the executive producer and a vice president for the New York Jets, working with their media content. And now he is changing careers at age 54. <laughs> so we're going to find out what that's all about. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having me, Larry and Mike. I love seeing you guys. Um, thank you very much. Seriously, it's a, it's a pleasure being with you. But thank you. Thanks for coming. And I uh, love your Emmys up there. You're obviously a very successful guy at what you are currently doing, but you're not doing it. It's in, It kind of ended August, but they won't let you go. We get it. But this, the media content is producing the news, the, the radio shows, the, the content, the uh, football content, the media, all media, right? Um, exactly, yeah. And you were with the San Francisco Giants uh, prior to the New York Jets. That's a baseball team, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong about that? Isn't the San Francisco Giants... You got it right, Mike. You got it right. I got it right, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And prior to the New York Jets. Okay. And um, but thank you, Larry, for yeah. Well, I just that. thought you know you'd want to you'd want to be clear on that. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Okay, so um, so anyway, you're with two great teams. Very, I mean, the Jets are awesome. Um, and and they've been you know since Joe Namath days the the one of the best teams on on the planet but That's, you know you know that he has not been following the nfl by saying that they've been one of the best teams on the on the planet I, and you know what i think they have i enjoy watching them i picked That's them different. in and that's but different. this is you know what larry this is chris's interview so that's let's true. go back to chris that's true chris okay yeah. so you have all of this under your belt and you probably have some killer stories about some of the sports legends that you've worked with. Can you give us one or two? Just, just let us know what, what they're all about. No, absolutely. And again, thanks for having me. And you also forgot the Oakland Raiders. I was with the Oakland Raiders for six years before eight with the Giants and now seven with the Jets. Was that was Stabler there then? No, 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 no. <laughs> Rich Gannon was. And my first year with the Raiders, we went to the Super Bowl. Gannon was the MVP. Great individual, tremendous pro. Uh, we didn't win that day, but it was an awesome season. So, yeah, I mean, I'll start with the Raiders. I'll go in a, like in a linear fashion if you guys. Sure. I remember one of our road trips when I was with the Raiders. We went to Kansas City to play the rival Chiefs. Okay, I think this is the 2002, that season, okay, that we went to the Super Bowl. And I remember before um, football games on Sunday, teams usually have a form of a walkthrough, which is to go through the plays at like, 10% speed. They're basically walking through the formations, this, that, and the other. So we're at Arrowhead Stadium. It's a cold November day, a morning of that Saturday before the Sunday game. And people over here are going through the plays. When they finished, they usually sit around and talk, not sit around, but stand around and talk about formations and some of the next day's game plan. Meanwhile, two Hall of Famers, Jerry Rice and Tim Brown, went to the other side of the field and ran the 50 yard gassers, which means they took the width of the field and ran sprint, took a breath, sprinted back, took a breath, sprinted back, took a breath. It was unbelievable. I said, you know, and I was just getting into the team side of the NFL thinking, oh my gosh, these guys are legendary hard workers, but now I'm witnessing it. This is incredible. And so then obviously we went to the Super Bowl. So that hard work paid off and they were setting an example. Also, Hall of Fame center Jim Otto. I simultaneously, this was my introduction into the NFL and the, and the Oakland Raiders at the time, was a gentleman in his late 60s at that time snapping the ball to uh, an equipment person. And I'm thinking, my gosh, he's been out of the league for all these years. He's not a young man, and he's snapping the ball just to you know, see if he still had it. And I said, you know what? This is what it takes to be at this level. It's that focus, that hard work, and never letting down, you know, Le never letting your guard down and always staying with that edge. 
So that's one story. That was one of my first stories. But I, I could share as many as you guys want. Well, but I know the Joe Namath different. one it re really intrigues me. Joe Namath. Yeah. No, and we talked about this. Yes, a couple years ago, the anniversary of the Super Bowl win by the New York Jets over the Baltimore Colts, we did a show commemorating that 50-year anniversary. Called, and the show was called The Guarantee. It actually won an Emmy with our group. And I was fortunate enough to produce that with others. Emmys resemble and um, exemplify, listen, group efforts. These are not individual efforts. So I want to stress that. So I was able to produce that show with other folks in a hotel in downtown Manhattan where they had a reunion of some of the members of that Super Bowl winning team. And working closely with Joe, he is as advertised. He's unbelievable. He's kind. He cares. He is uh, smart. He understands how to be a great leader, a great teammate. I was beyond blown away and having that, you know, the fortune of working with him for that show. And then I've, you know, had some other um, workings with him over the years, and he is incredible. He's Broadway yeah. Joe for a reason, and he's just a, a tremendously nice man, too. Ah, that's so, great to know, hear. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things about, you know, the, the any professional sports, I think, is that, you know, th there are pros and cons. I mean, you know, there's the issues with head injuries and football and all that kind of stuff. But the point of getting there, the discipline uh and, and and perseverance that's required to play at that level i think is is a good life lesson and a lot of those guys uh who have played uh very often carry that into their uh next professional life uh you know if they if they make a determination they want to do something they do it with the same ferocity that they used to get to that level of play and so ha have you found that with a lot of the uh, players that you've experienced over the years? Perfect segue, Larry. Seriously, I see you guys have done this before. Um, obviously, I haven't because your mics are better than mine, but we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> listen, that gets me to a San Francisco Giants story. So while I was with the Giants, I was fortunate to be part of those three World Series teams. I didn't throw. I didn't hit. I didn't take any grounders. Let's be clear. Everyone who's listening to this and watching knows that. But... I was on the front line of, of interviewing and telling the stories, again, with an incredible group of individuals that I was fortunate to work with. And uh, to, Larry, to your point, I remember talking hitting with shortstop Brandon Crawford, catcher Buster Posey. I mean, I was gonna say Hall of Favor, but he's destined to do it, but not yet. Um, and he just became part of the Giants ownership group. I'm not sure if you saw that, to your point about future endeavors. And, our, and Brandon Belt and Pablo Sandoval and Gregor Blanco, all these guys, Hunter Pence, talking pitching with Javier Lopez and Sergio Romo, all these incredible athletes. And the difference between, if I may clump the three of us in, between us and them is their focus, their focus on their craft, talking, hitting with those guys, because I wasn't a pitcher growing up, I was more of a hitter. So I would ask them about focus and, you know, how they, is it a guess? Is it looking fastball? Well, how do you deal with the off speed? And just all these years of, of being fortunate to ask those questions, their answers, their answers were next level. Not only what they did on the field, but their mental approach, how they went to, into the cage and took, you know, off the tee, how they approached um, little batting practice sessions that you and I would think, oh, they're just messing around. No, everything has a reason. Hitting behind the runner, all of this, it's just, just watching like how their eyes shifted when they were talking about it yeah and and then pitching and then you know Sergio Romo's um, famous slider and and Javier Lopez crafting around the plate um just you know he won four four World Series three with us one with another team with Boston and just a guy that just their focus their determination and they apply that not everybody not all of us but they apply that focus to their um, future endeavors and some we can see why some of them are incredibly successful mm. well you've had this incredible career so far incredible but right in the middle of that you stopped and said you know I think I'd like to get my master's degree. I don't have that yet, but you're in your forties when you decide that, right? Yeah. And you're now working up in, in New York at the time, but your, your classes are in San Francisco. Am I no, right? So, 
I was at the last year. I didn't know it was going to be my last year. But my last year at the Giants is when I started that in okay. 2015. And yes, I went back to get my master's degree in leadership studies at St. Mary's College, my alma mater, where I had graduated 25 years previous, almost to the day. <laughs> so I went back to school because I wanted to be a better leader. You know, I was overseeing these in-house units, content units, and I wanted to get a, a wider wor world view, like see the world just in a, in a better way, a more efficient way, get better vocabulary, understand psychology, concepts, be able to empower folks at a next level. I was doing okay, you know, but I really felt an inside need to get better. So that program was perfect. And it just, I was like, it was a talk about light bulbs, epiphanies, all those cliches were true. And I enjoyed the heck out of it. So to your question, Mike, the first year I would go over from, I, we lived in the East Bay of the Bay Area. So it was an easy commute to St. Mary's every six right. weeks, right? But then we decided to move to New Jersey to work with the New York Jets. So I'd have to fly back. Listen, there's greater problems in life. And I enjoyed it. I got to see my family. I go back to Northern California um, and completed the program. And it changed my life. Changed well, my I, life. Wow. I want to stop you right there because I think- Please. There's a critically important point, and we'll get to that also a little bit later. But the point is, is that a lot of people, when they get into a particular job or profession, is that they they feel like, okay, I'm here now, and I'm just going to do this. And there was something in you that made you say, I need to understand things more. I need I need more knowledge. I need more ideas to make my job better, to make me better, to, to really take me to the next level, you know, causing you to say, okay, I got to go back and get more education. The reason I think that's an important point is because a lot of people don't do that or they're afraid to do that. And now probably more, more than 2015, the opportunities available, like you, you don't have to go to a college, you can do it online through a variety of methods. I mean, they have, they have one uh, online organization where you can take classes at Oxford or Harvard or wherever you want uh, based on, on what your needs are. So that's a point I really wanna emphasize and I want you to emphasize is the idea that something made you say, I need more and you acted on it. You know, I, I th often think about why, what was the catalyst? You know, there wasn't a singular moment it was just self-awareness, right? It was self-awareness. And, and I really worked on that even in a non-formal education way. And so I said, you know what? I just have to get better. Listen, when I was a little kid, I was obsessed with baseball and I always would take countless grounders all the way up into college, you know, more grounders, hitting more in the cage. I just have always had a quest to get better, like to maximize what ability I've been given. And this fell into that category. And that's as simple as it was. And then I said, you know what? I, I just, if I'm going to continue being a leader, I have to be the best version of myself in these positions. The people that I am leading deserve that. They deserve that. And so when I would be on one-on-ones and I, you know, said, oh, geez, how did they, how did they leave my office? Did they leave it the best that I could have done for them? And so anyway, those are the skills that I learned in the program. So I was right. I did have a lot of improvement and I needed it. So um, the, one of the greatest decisions, aside from marrying my wife, one of the greatest decisions I've made, it has enriched my life, changed my life. Um, and I'm just an unbelievably uh, passionate and a constant learner in the space now. I just can't get enough. I, I love it. That's, that's awesome. And that brings us to the next question then. So you're here, you, great career. Master's degree, intellectual curiosity is eating you up, right? And, yeah. and now you decide that you're going to put all of this work into a consulting firm to teach leadership to corporations and, and to individuals. You're leaving your cushy, great, fantastic job. That everybody would want. Right. And you're 54 yeah. years young. And now you're going off onto another adventure in life, another chapter. How do you do that? Yes, following your passion, menopause, right? You are the ultimate menopause man because you are following <laughs> your passion. 
So tell us about the leadership consulting that you're starting. So thanks, Mike. No, and I, if anybody who's sitting and listening could, could um, benefit from this story, that's beautiful. So thank you for teeing it up that way. No, I, and so when I got done with the master's program, I started, I was fortunate and have been fortunate to teach leadership at New York University since 2018. And I could not be more grateful than to interact with these students. So this has fueled another side of it. It's like learning how people that age think as they go out into the professional world. I learn as much from them as they do from me. And the exchanges that we have to this day, as some of them have graduated and we stay in contact, there's a lot of them. And so they're, they're fueling that as well. So what I'm saying is where I'm going with this is I said, hmm, this relationship, this, this go back and forth here with these students, there's something here. And so with the education, the teaching, and then saying, okay, I am a constant, myself a constant student of this. The Jets were kind enough to let me implement a program at the Jets, a leadership development program that we did a five-week uh, workshop series that went very well. Um, the, the response I had was, was incredibly humbling. It was um, heartfelt. And my colleagues, they were emerging leaders in different areas of our business. And from that, I just said, okay, from that feedback, I got to do this to your wow. previous question, gentlemen, you know, at 54 mm -hmm. years old, I have to correct you on one thing, Mike, there's nothing cushy about working in professional sports. <laughs> it's a grind and it's, it's wonderfully fulfilling, but it's, it's challenging just like any other profession, but I love you anyway. Anyway, so, <laughs> so that's what, that was the last catalyst. So the education, the teaching, and then the workshop. And I said, okay, I got to do this and I have to take a chance and I got to go all in. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going all in. Now I'm still consulting with the Jets, which is awesome. Again, they have treated me with unbelievable kindness. And, um, it, and I love still seeing my colleagues, but you know, a lot of my time now is spent in what you said, consulting for organizations and individuals in the space of leadership and employee development. Let me ask you a question. Oh, sure. sorry. I, just along that with the um, with the pandemic, did that yeah. have anything to do with you changing your mindset and, and wanting to do this where the, and the reason I'm asking that is you probably got to work from home a little bit more um, mm -hmm. and you probably realized that maybe, you know, there is something else out there that I could do from home or, you know, go teach. Did, did that have anything to do with your decision? It probably did. And I think most people, as they reflect back on the pandemic, you know, they would probably say it had more. You know, if you're looking at this from a 50,000 foot view, they say, oh, yeah, he went through the pandemic. He had an epiphany. It's really been in the making since 2015, which was way, you know, it was that was the moment. But yes, I think to some degree, working from home and, and mobilizing and being able to you know, and you'd have to ask the people on the Jets team, but like inspire and keep people moving, despite the fact we're all over the country and, you know, communicating via this. So I, I said, wow, you know, it, we're still moving. We're still doing good work. People are responding to what we're trying to do culturally within the department that I oversaw. So, yeah, perhaps it did, but maybe not as much as other folks making decisions right. in this time frame. But yes, of course, mm -hmm. there was a, a lot of introspection and a lot of evaluating and you know trying to be here more for my family i'm sure that all subconsciously maybe more for me played into it mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know uh I, I think that parallels really well with you know we all kind of had a, a reset of of our thinking with the pandemic in terms of what's important in life what's not uh, and also I, and i find this personally that when i'm on vacation or i take some time off that a lot of the pressures and uh, things that are weighing down on me are lifted off. And it actually makes me more creative, makes me want to think about doing other things. And that actually is very similar, I think, to what retirement can be. You know, if you're working in a job where you're just grinding it out every day, and then all of a sudden that's gone, or that, you know, you can either get depressed because now you have nothing to do in your mind, or you can, and this is what we keep pushing, is think back to, you know, what are a couple of original passions that you had in life, right? 
And now that you have the time to kind of think about it and perhaps act on it, we're telling you, go ahead and do it. And that's kind of where you are uh, in, in terms of, of coming to some sort of realization that there's more that you can accomplish with your life. And so what would you tell somebody that comes to you on a, a let's say you were doing some sort of one-on-one -on -one counseling for a professional a person trying to figure out where to go. How would you tell them, uh, what would be the process that you would recommend that they go through? So I start with this, great question. Seriously, Larry, great question. Pay attention to what you pay attention to. What lights you up? You know, as we go through life, to your point about earlier passions from our youth, maybe middle age, whatever the case may be, but currently, what are you paying attention to? What is it when you talk to somebody, you elevate, your, your body elevates, your tone elevates, you know, and you're, you're engaged, your eyes change. What is that? What are those things? And that, not all the time, but that usually will guide you to something that will fulfill you, right? Um, I was at a dinner the other night and this gentleman in his um, late 60s was saying, you know, I, I'm bored, I'm retired and I wanna, I wanna go do something still. And I, I was asking him a series of questions. Very nice man. My gosh, very successful. And I, I was asking him a series of questions and he had not done that work, meaning he wasn't, he was just kind of um, passively entering into that phase of his life and being frustrated, but not willing to do the work. Back to the Jerry Rice and Tim Brown right. uh, um, comparison and story is like, you got to do the work. You have to, you know, check on your self-awareness, check on, you know, who you are as an individual. What were you good at? It takes work and it takes help sometimes to ask the right questions, you know, back in your job. What did you do that you really enjoyed? And, you know, make a list of five back in your job. What weren't you necessarily not that good at or didn't light you up? Right. Well, let's put that over here. You're at a different phase of your life now. So double down on the good and try to create something. Be creative. And allow yourself, Larry, like to go on vacation, decompress or whatever that is for you as an individual. Maybe it's a round of golf. Maybe it's, um, you know, a half day out on a sailboat. But whatever it is that stimulates your creativity to figure out that path for you. So just trying to help people, you know, and take advantage of their individual likes, dislikes and beliefs and passions. Wow. In your leadership coaching, you know, I have a company that uh, there's several partners in it. Do you take all the partners together and get them, let's say, on a Zoom meeting and coach them that way individually or as a team? So, Mike, let me be very candid with you. I am just getting started. This is I'm less than a month into this. So I have had. But I will tell you this. I have been coaching individuals for decades you know, in an, not informal, I mean, within the confines of my job, right? So I have done this work and this training um, practically for a lot of different folks. So I'm just tipping my toes or getting my toes into this right now. And it's going wonderfully. But, you know, I don't have a, a lengthy uh, resume per se of success stories, but I am working on it. I'll tell you that I have been working seven but days a week. Could you do that? Could you do a, a whole team? On yes, Zoom? The, okay, so let's back up. So at the Jets, it was a whole team of folks. Right. It was, you okay. know, a bunch of folks in a room, in person, and that's what that coaching was. And I, I, like I said, the feedback was great. And we did a lot of this. They're at different stages of their careers, but it's still the same premise. Get work on your self-awareness. How do you communicate? How are you showing up every day? What languages are you using? Are you coming in with hot with, oh, accusatory language, or are you coming in open-minded and, and showing empathy? So we went through all that and it was uh, very rewarding. Hmm. So do you make them do sprints while they're there? You know, we started with sprints and then we'd get the baseball gloves on, we'd play a little catch, we'd work on hitting the off-speed pitch. It was a whole, whole slew. It, there's a couple guys on our team that I'd like you to make them do sprints before oh. they get on camera. And he's trying to get rid of them is what yeah. he's doing. Uh, uh, but uh, so now part of your process over the last couple of months since we talked last was starting a website and kind of getting everything together. Uh, what, what, uh, uh, what's been your progress on that? And do you have a website 
that we can send our uh, um, followers to? So the website is still in the process. I'm going through iterations of it with the web designers. It's garganoleadership.com, G-A-R-G-A-N-O leadership.com. Nice. And you could schedule meetings with me. I just don't have all the uh, the written work and the photos. It's starting to look really nice. So I, you know, listen, I gave when I was full time at the Jets, which was a few weeks ago, I gave everything. So I made this transition and I wanted to do it right. So I'm starting all this development of my materials. I have the materials, but for folks to see them is a work in progress. So yeah, and that's, uh, that's very timely. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, and that's another clue, though, to how to do this. You know, nothing's going to come easy. Uh, and nothing's so, cushy. Right. Not in this yeah, world. Cushy, uh, except the pillow that Mike's sitting on. That's <laughs> cushy. but uh, but no, I mean, you know, if you want something like this, and you're you're kind of like the poster boy for this. If you want something like this, you can't just sit back and say, "Okay, well, now I'm this." You have to put the work in and you have to also do your best. So you could have thrown up a website, you know, okay, I'm ready for business, but you're not doing that. You're looking at that website saying, mm, we got to do this and I need to add that. And it has to, it has to be right from the get go because that's who you are and that's what it takes to succeed. Whether you're running those sprints or whether you're starting this new endeavor, you have to do the best job uh, that you can do. So well put, Larry. And I'll tell you this. When I did the workshop series, the, the what I'm going to do now in my new career, when I did it at the Jets in the spring, it was five weeks. I didn't take a single day off. I mean, I would, we, it was 90 minute sessions once a week. I would complete those, whether we had them on Wednesday, Thursdays or whatever. I would go throughout the weekend, analyze how the previous one went, and plan the next one all weekend. Word choices, you know, subject matter. What did the individual say there that's going to drive next week's session? There was a lot of transparency and sharing. And I have a, a ton of admiration for those colleagues. I keep saying it, they deserve it. And I would plan and go and go. So that was intense. It was like a boot camp. So from that work ethic, that is what I'm doing now. I have not taken a day off. Not uh, People are saying, ah, well, who is this guy? What the heck? I'm just giving you the truth. There has not been a day off um, since uh, my transition into the consulting world in preparation to your point. So I am there for my future clients so I can help them. I could get them going or create a situation for them where they are better and be their catalyst to a, a better and more fulfilling uh, career path or a career situation, whatever the case may be. It takes a lot of work and I, I love it, but yeah. it's, it's, yeah, Mike, no cushy, wow. man. No cushy. No cushy, <laughs> no cushy for you. Um, well, this is, Chris, this has been great. Um, we are looking forward to your, another success uh, in your career. Um, it's garganoleadership.com. Uh, I'm going to be one of your first clients, believe it or not. As soon as we're done with this, we're going to talk. So everybody jump on board. You're getting him when he's fresh. And we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to be coming back to you once you've been yes. up running so that you have some more interesting kind of examples to, to share with our audience. I mean, we, we have a similar experience. We started manopause.com as a dream. And, and people kind of look at us and they're like, um, are you guys still working full time and doing that? And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what it takes. You know, if you want to build your dream, you got to find the time uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're, you're a great example. You're a great guy. You're easy to talk to. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think you're going to have big, big success with this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, some of our followers will will take advantage of the knowledge and enthusiasm that you have for, you know, changing your life, no matter how old you are. No, I really appreciate it, guys. I can't tell you how thankful I am to be a part of your podcast and your mission statement. You know, it's so wonderful that you're, you're doing this. Um, and, and just, just to Mike, I can't wait to talk to you. That's flattering. It's a, you know, it goes back to just a, um, a genuine love of people, you know, just really enjoying that um, helping folks. It's really cool. It's really, uh, thank you. That's 
hopefully what you see coming out in me is just uh, right. let's let's do it, you know. Right. Well, let's, thank you so right. much. Th thank you, and thank your wife for letting you do this since you don't <laughs> have any time at all. So we really appreciate that she gave up a little bit of time today uh, for you to do this. And definitely, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to post this. I think you're going to get great response, and then hopefully in the next few months we can have you back to kind of talk about how things are going. Would love it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right. Have a great weekend. You too. All right.